Okay, so this is another AliExpress guitar pedal kit. This is the compressor, and uh, just got it finished. Very straightforward build. Um, everything you need to know is in the instructions. There were no surprises, and uh, it does work just fine. I have a feeling because I have the guitar amp at happy listening volume, you're going to hear the guitar's acoustic noise, so I'm going to try to turn away from it. I'll just give you a few chords with it off. So this is already a fairly compressy kind of amplifier, but we'll turn on our compressor and uh, we'll see how much sustained increase we get. Obviously that's not set out to maximum. You can set it out even farther and get more sustain yet. Depending on how you want to use a compressor, some people will use it to make gentle touch, gentle playing, like on a finger picker or something, on acoustic guitar works well, um, just to make gentle sounds stand out and be more resonant. Or you could use it the opposite way for somebody who's a very percussive player, it will cut down on the attack. So let's just listen to a couple very hard hit chords before and after. So without As you can tell, the compressor takes the sharp edge off the front of the note and uh, will give you sustain on the back end. These are also sometimes referred to as a leveling amplifier, where it tries to uh, make the volume uniform from start to finish of whatever you put into them. So it is working well. Um, it takes Sometimes these are a little fiddly. You have to figure out what works for what guitar and what works for what amplifier, but effectively you've got you can set how much compression you have and then what your output level is on the other end so you can really give it a boost if you want and you can use it to overdrive something too if you wish But um, anyway works fine everything's well and uh, the build is coming up thanks for watching and if you want to see it build you can just stay tuned okay so we got one more aliexpress kit to do and then we're going to move on to some other type of videos for a little while what type of co component is this, or what type of kit is this? It's uh, that. Um, <laughs> yeah, for those of you who only read English, um, your guess is as good as mine. Now, when they package these, if you order multiple kits at a time like I do, normally the parts, the parts and circuit board for a kit are in one bag and then the enclosure is separate. But this is a compressor. I don't know if that was in the shot or not, so if you saw it, then I... That was a dumb joke. Um, this appears to be an optical compressor. We have an LED, which would be the green one, the LED facing a LDR, like a little photo cell, which is uh, right here. And uh, that should generate the compression. Now, 
whenever I see photocell and lights coupled together, I always think there kind of should be like shrink wrap tubing or something to, um, uh, you know, block any external light from hitting it. So we might do that if I deem it necessary. I mean, I've got shrink wrap tube here. We can try it with or without or whatever. Um, but, um, yeah, so... The shrink wrap tube just seems to make the most sense to me. Yeah, make a roach out of it or whatever. That way I don't have any extraneous light. Okay, let's begin. Good circuit board that fits the um, switch. Got capacitors, resistors, normal stuff. There is a notation here that apparently you need to bridge these two connections, so they wrote wire there, so I'm assuming those need to be bridged. Um, it's good that that's noted here rather than me having to figure it out later on the website after it doesn't work initially. But it um, looks pretty straightforward, so our soldering iron is hot and we'll begin. We're going to try to do an editing that's similar to the last one, so this is the 22K where when I get to, you know, something redundant, like I'm going to clip and tin five pieces of wire, we'll uh, stop the film for that, because that's of no consequence. But um, just in doing that, it took the video time from two hours down to one hour for the demo and the, and the uh, build. And I don't think anybody wants to watch super long videos anyway, unless you're actually doing this at home, so... If this has helped you or anything, by all means, you can let me know in the comments. I enjoy hearing from you. i try to answer as many questions as I can. But uh, I do these because I enjoy them, and it just gives me some... keeps me busy. Sometimes you just have that personality type where you want to always be making things. And I suppose people with mega dollars are probably making more buildings or something. Okay, 47R. And people with slim budgets are building little electronic stuff or model cars or whatever. You know, everybody's got a hobby. Keeps them out of trouble. Today, instead of pinching the leads together, I'm spreading them apart. I want to see if that works better for me when I go to solder these down. Which works better? And I got one more batch here. This is one meg. So I'll put the one megs on there. I'll try to slide that so it's in the shot so we can look at that all at once. Where is the one meg resistor? There's one. Okay, and I see them both now. Some of these newer kits that uh, our vendor here is selling are uh, better. They're an improvement because I did play some of the older kits and work with some of the older kits, and the units, you know, were just the boards were just marked with. R1, R2, R3, as opposed to values and things like that. So it involves a lot more sheet checking and more paper and just more headache. When they're marked like this, it makes it a nice fluid assembly. Today I'm going to tell myself to use just a little bit of solder because these are small pads and small pads only need a little bit of solder if you actually get it on the pad. I would say that these are 
probably not level one soldering projects just because it's a little small. But they're not terrible. So, you know, maybe we'll call it a level two project, level two or three. They're not too bad. And nothing makes you feel better than when you put something together and you turn it on and it works. And nothing makes you more frustrated when it doesn't work. Frustrating, frustratingest, is that even a word? The frustratingest part is when the reason it doesn't work is unbeknownst to you. Because you swear you did everything right and you checked your everything's nine times. Alright, so far so good. So we only have the one resistor at the top to solder. Placing more resistors. I've seen a lot of YouTubers that'll do their pedal builds and stuff in, you know, time lapse. I don't know that that helps anybody. It's probably more efficient for those watching, but I'm assuming if you're watching this, you either just really enjoy watching electronics go together or you're going to build along with me. And if you build along with me, I wish you the best of luck. And I hope you have some enjoyment out of the finished product. I'm sorry, it looks like I took that out of shot while I was clipping. I'm trying to remember roughly my table where the shot is. Can we just do this low budget? filmed with the potato. So high definition cameras cost a good deal of money, so unless we're going to actually build one, that would be fun. Let's build a high definition camera. See if they have a kit. Okay, so we're on 100K now. My next planned video is going to be a. I'm holding 100k, am I not? Yes, I am. Okay. My next planned video is to actually do kind of a shootout of inexpensive guitar effects and expensive guitar effects. Um, not necessarily to shame one or the other, because I found that certain things sound different and some people might prefer the more expensive and some might prefer the less expensive, but I want to take it to extremes. I want to actually use some pedals. This is 220k. I want to use some that are very expensive in the realms of a couple hundred, over a hundred dollars at least, um, versus ones that are twenty-five dollars roughly $25 to $30. So, I think that'll be interesting to line those up side by side because at some point there's probably going to be a point of diminishing returns where you find that maybe the $200 one sounds, you know, better than the $50 one, but the difference is only worth a dollar to you. So, okay, we got 10k. Okay, we have 10k.
470k, I believe. I only see one more resistor spot here. Okay, there's 4.7k and 470k. So that's 470k, and then that's 4.7k. Okay. Cool. if they would just, granted we need a little bit of a lead on those, but I think that probably the manufacturers could cut the length on the resistor lead down to half, and nobody would complain. I do like to do big projects too, but sometimes these little projects like this give you more instant gratification. And that will keep me motivated to work on the big projects. For anybody who's curious about that Ampeg B3 or B4R that I was looking at, I'm not certain I'm going to take the effort to fix it. I'm debating still. But uh, I did have a offer. Somebody was interested in parts from it. And they actually pony up and pay for them. And they just uh, use that as parts for other projects because there are some really cool pieces on it that I could use for other things. And that way I'm not throwing hours upon hours and dollars upon dollars into it only to deal with more issue. That particular amplifier has some PC board damage and some stuff. Oop, there's one I missed, so don't click the one you missed. Use it as an indicator so you know to go back and solder it again. pads on this board are very small. Sometimes it doesn't look like you got it when you did get it, just depending on the light. And the light in here is probably not great. And the potato camera probably would love more light, but this is not a filming studio. This is a hobby basement. Girls don't come down here because it's full of fun electronic nerdy toys that my wife has no interest in. Not solder, but for an unusual twist on it, I didn't put quite as much on there as I wanted to. Usually it's the opposite. That's funny, why does it not want to adhere to that pad? It's weird. There we go. Now we got it. 
sometimes when you're using a little bit of a fatter tip soldering iron, getting it all the way onto those tiny pads can be a goof, and then you end up with solder just running up the leg of your component rather than doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so that takes care of the resistors. Then we move on to capacitors. And there's a lot of them that are the 473s. So I'll start with those. I think there's four of these. And let's see, this one right here, this 473, this one right here, they said to connect to those two legs together. So we'll do that. I'll try to do that in a non wasteful way. Because I don't need to go get. I know it says wire, but I don't know that we necessarily need to go find wire. Okay. And just use the lead. Should be one more. There we go. And there should be one that's 103. 103 goes on the side over here. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with an optical compression circuit whatsoever, um, basically when the LED lightens up, this is going to cut the resistance here and it should bring the volume down. So having these components facing each other is kind of the only thing that's uh, mission critical. So if you've never seen inside of one of these or never done any one of these or at least looked how they worked, that might throw you for a loop. just had a really stupid thought that has nothing relevant to do with much of anything, but I wonder what it would be like if I tried to solder left-handed. Would anything interesting come of it? I don't know. Okay. And since these, this is the edge Right there, that's where they said, you know, to wire these two together. I'm just going to take this lead from this one, lay it across right there, like that, and then we'll solder that on. And it should, there's a covered, you know, covered trace there, so I don't think we're going to have any negative consequences for that. Yeah, I think the number one detriment, and this is not to be mean or insulting, but these alley kits, if you're a total, total noob to building guitar pedals, um, the instructions on these can be a little weak. And the problem is when you want to start as a noob, you probably want the most detailed, involved instructions you can possibly have. And uh, I don't get that here. 
They're not terrible, but compare that to like a step-by-step-by-step -step -by -step thing you would get with a different kit that might cost $50, $60, $70. Okay, now what are we going to do? We'll do the diode. No, let's do the op amp. What kind of op amp is this anyway? Or is it even an op amp? It says 4558EA, I think. Oh, yeah. Duh. When in doubt, look at the directions. 4558. So, I think that's an... I think that's an op amp. Probably is an op amp. I can look it up. As you can see, I'm not the super electronics aficionado. I don't just look at that and go, Oh, that's what that is. I know what that is. Yeah, that's the same one that uh, is used in uh, the Johnny Bravo or Drive Insider or something or other. You know. At this point, I'm just tacking the corners lightly. There, now that we got it flush, now we'll actually solder it. And chaos ensues upstairs. bead of solder from tacking that just jumped over and bridged that on me. I think I need to watch over here too because this pin one is awfully close to that resistor. So if you're doing this at home and you make a bridge, I'm assuming you have some solder wick. If you don't have a solder vac, just see, sometimes you just get those bridges just with a little bit of help from your iron. Yeah, so we did there. I was just able to lift that bridge with my soldering iron. That doesn't work. I got the solder sucking tool. Okay, so disaster averted. Yeah, don't leave any bridges in place except for ones that you intentionally created. Diode. This is a. It looks like a 4004. Yeah, it is. 4004. It's the only diode in the kit. I, I have to say, I don't think once. I don't think once. I have had these kits actually missing anything, other than maybe supplying a little less wire than I wanted to use. Okay. And I say that I wanted to use because I probably could have, you know, worked with the amount that I had. I can overzealous. Okay. And then we got the electrolytic caps. Let's lay those in there. Okay, good. The legs on the transistors are separated a little bit. Okay, so I got a 10 mic positive to the middle. go all the way down on the board. Yeah. Cool. And then we have our big 47 mic. Electrolytic caps always observe the polarity because if you do it backwards they go boom. If you want to watch electronics go boom actually you can watch the Electro Boom channel. I do enjoy that one very much. You will learn some electronic principles while watching him blow things up. I do not have the 
interest in blowing things up, though. I like to make things work. leads on the diodes. Uh, we'll put the chip in just for fun. So otherwise I might forget later. You know, I wonder if any of these boards or kits have actually ever wound up on the boutique market selling for uber dollars, because they are handmade. It's possible. Okay, and then I have two transistors, which I'm going to hope big time that are marked correctly on the board. Usually if there's some kind of error on there, but he posts pictures and things to help you. So the board says this is supposed to be a 2N30, 2N30, or E3904, 2N3904, and that's what the transistor itself says, so that's not a substitution. It is possible to substitute sometimes. There's a lot of similarities from transistor to transistor. Just like there are, I suppose, with vacuum tubes or other things, sometimes there's a substitute that'll work good. So we're going to cross our fingers that the pictures they have here are the proper orientation for these. But if they're not, it'll make me sad. But that's okay. Making bridges with transistors is the easiest goof to do. The transistors and the op amp chip. The easiest places to get bridges, especially if you're soldering with a big clunky soldering iron. Okay, so far so good. Now we have this. And I'm really, really thinking I want to make a little isolator for it. So why don't we just do make a little roach for it like they do on a fender amp. If I make it now and I don't like it, I can just cut it off with a razor knife. But if I do like it, then I'll be happy. So I'll put the shrink wrap tubing on there, and we'll give it just a little bit of warmth there from the iron. It should just shrink right around my LED. Hang on there. You can shrink your shrink wrap with whatever you like. You don't have to use the soldering iron. You can use a heat gun or a hair dryer or whatever makes you happy. And I'll slip that in there against the LED. 
I just want to make sure the leads are flattened together. I don't necessarily, this one's not polarized, the LED is, but if I find a polarity is wrong, I just roll it over, right? Okay, and then we'll warm that up too. So if I find that this was a dumb idea, even once I have it put together, I can just cut it off. Now if you're at home working on one of these, and you don't have any shrink wrap tubing, that's okay. You can probably get away with some electrical tape if it's good. And on LEDs, the plus is the longer lead. So I'll make sure I'll go with the correct orientation here. But let's bend this a dead 90 degree first. to wrestle it onto the board. Completely off topic, I was surprised today that I saw my old car on the road today. A car I have not owned in oh, a couple of years I sold it. And I sold it for like $500. And actually I know the mechanic who works on it. He's a friend of ours. So He's probably working for the current owner to help him keep it going. But, uh, props for keeping an old car going. Okay, we're good except for that little solder joint. Looks like a crummy, ugly potato joint, so we'll fix that. Okay. Okay, so there's our board so far. I think that looks pretty cool. I like that I did that. If I don't like that, I can always just cut it back off, but I like doing that. Okay, so now I have S1 and 2, which should be the sustain pot, which is the 500K, and then the volume pot, which is three leads. So I've got five leads to cut for the pots, and then we can put those on, and um, I'll do that with the camera turned off. Okay, so I got the wire soldered on here. And now we're going to put them on the respective posts. Okay, so looking at the back of these, three, two, one, and then we find the respective. So the 100K pot is a volume, so volume three. Volume 2, and Volume 1 respectively. I actually like this wire pretty well. It's thin and flexible, and the insulation doesn't really go to crap when you warm it up um, with the soldering iron. Hey, you can melt it, obviously, because it's probably not the Teflon. It's probably just a PVC or something, but it's at least modestly heat resistant, which is great. The biggest headache we have with these wires is getting them into the board and keeping them there long enough to solder them. So what we'll do is I'll just insert these, flip the board, and then turn the camera back on. Okay, so those are on. Yay. So I suppose next I'll solder wires onto the jacks 
for the I.O. jacks, it's the same as we did the other day. One jack will get three, so tip, ring, and sleeve. The other jack will get two for just tip and sleeve. Or they refer to it as shield. I'm sorry, I call it sleeve, they call it shield. Whatever, who cares? As long as we, long as we make the project and it works, right? Yeah, this wire is much, much better than the other kits. And uh, there's not as much mess in this, there's just less stuff in here, so I have a feeling getting this into the enclosure is going to be better too. Okay, so <coughs> the wires are soldered onto the jacks, so now we put the jacks on the board. On the output side, we only need the tip and the sleeve. So we have out tip and then the sleeve will go to the ground lug. So that's what we'll do here. There's tip to out tip. And ground to there. Technically, any of those labeled ground are acceptable to use. I'm just using whatever seems to be closest to where I want to be. good. And then we have the input jack and that one we have tip, ground, and PWC is where the ring goes. I noticed they did one thing that I didn't do on my last project and it doesn't affect function but I see why they did it so we'll do that when we do this one. <clears throat> and that has nothing to do with the input jack, that was just something random I thought of. Round. And then we'll do signal in, which is the tip. This wire is a little thinner than the wire on the last kit we did, so it's a little bit more likely to slip out of wherever you plug it into. So, I feel like that was a good camera time waste. But what they did on this is they took for the battery, um, using this loop, you can go down through the top and then back up through the bottom. And then that keeps your lead length a little bit more in control, and it gives a strain relief to the battery thing, so somebody is less likely to 
accidentally rip it off the board, so I thought that was kind of cool. So we'll solder our battery down into plus and minus, and then we'll move on to doing the LED and the foot switch. Okay, so I put the leads on the LED. I usually just bend them out 90 degrees and make a little hook with the wire. I leave one lead on there. In this case, it's the negative lead. That way I can reference it once I get this soldered down to the board in the respective LED plus and LED minus locations. Once it's soldered into position and I know the LED's in there correctly, we'll clip that lead off. So, insert that on the board. So LED plus. This type of wire, some of it I found doesn't really have to be pre-tinned before putting it down in these um, circuit board holes. This kind does just pre-tin this stuff. Otherwise you won't, if you pre-tin it, you won't look like an airhead like I am fussing to get the wire to go down the hole without strands popping off and sticking everywhere. Once you get it down there, then sometimes trying to give it a little bit of a bend to hold it in place helps. Good. So now we'll clip that leg off. Okay. LED's done. So the only things left to do are the power jack and the switch. And then we're done. The power jack has the nut on the inside, so that'll need to be stuck in the case. Um, before you connect it to the board. So my suggestion is put all three leads on it, put it in the box, put it on the board, and then stick it all together as kind of the last step. And, uh, we'll put their switch on the board, and we want the switch to be flush to the board. So we'll do a little tacking here. Hold it tight. Tack one corner. and watch it fall back out because it didn't take. Sometimes it takes a little bit more solder to make these things tack on than you think it will. And now I didn't let it cool long enough. So now it doesn't want to slip back on. I might have to wick that extra solder off. Oh heavens. Come on Nelly. Play ball with me. There we go. solder on there just does not want to tack. I'm not giving it long enough to cool, that's what my problem is. I'm used to all of these things being tiny, tiny components and they cool in seconds. Where with these switches being bigger, that metal on these holds the heat. So congratulations everyone for watching me screw up on camera. I usually don't show my screw ups or I try not to, but I'm gonna leave that one in to show you. Even I do goof. Well, what the heck, I made a solder bridge when I was putting that uh, uh, IC in earlier. So. People who have done this a few times still make mistakes, especially if they're soldering using a potato like this iron is.
And remember this switch holds your PC board into the case. So we want to make sure we solder that on real good. Because this is it's gonna have a little bit of stress on it. And if it can't keep your board in case and all these connections crack, then the whole pedal's gonna quit working. And you're gonna be mad. You're gonna take it back apart. And you're gonna have to fix it. Almost happy with all of those, but I want to add a little bit more solder on this one. There we go. So, without blobbing too much, we've got an ample amount of solder on our uh, switch, and it's on there nice and tight. So now I'm happy, and we're going to move on to this thing. Um, I'm just going to put three wires on it for starters, and once we get the wires on there, then we'll put it in the box, and then solder it to the board, and then say a prayer, close up the box, apply power to it, and hope it doesn't catch fire. How is this going to catch fire? It's only 9 volts. Right? See in a few. Okay, so we're back. I have the three leads on the, on the jack and in the box. And I put the LED holster in the box too. Okay. So, the one with the L bracket goes to PWC, which is actually on the input jack. So the two I want to concern myself with are this one, which goes to 9 volt, and this one that goes to PWB on the board. So these two go to the board. This one's going to go to that jack. So the one that's going to go to the jack, I'm just going to tin it right now because makes it easier to put it on the jack when you pre-tin it. Come on, play ball with me. There we go. Okay. So, probably should just be tinning all of these. So I'm sitting right here with the iron. And I made a big blob. But if you ever make a goof, you can always fix it. At least in electronics. Maybe that's not true in life, but I think it is. Usually, anyway. Don't send me hate comments. Okay. So, the, the, this one, top one, is 9V. So that goes to the 9V port here. And then the other one is going to go to PWB over here. Okay. Those are in. I made that wire lead a little bit long, so I'm going to have a big pin sticking out, so I'll clip that. One. Two. The other one, PWC, this one right here, PWC is the ring of the input jack. So find the ring, that's this one over here, and since I pre-tinned it, hopefully I can just lay them together and touch it with the iron and it'll bond, try to make it even easier on myself by making a little loop. We'll see if we can make a mechanical connection with it first. And then that'll make sure it stays in place. I can actually get these things to bite on it. 
Well, it kind of worked. Kind of worked. There we go. Okay. That should more or less complete the adventure, other than stuffing it in the box and testing it. So, put the pots in the holes, put the, put the switch in the hole, put the jacks in the holes, tighten things down with a wrench, then test your pedal and hope nothing bad happens. Thanks for watching.